Amen. Thank you, Joel. Which open up to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, as we continue this series, The Blessed Life. Matthew chapter 5. We're in part 4 today, part 4 of The Blessed Life. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6. This is the fourth beatitude, the fourth characteristic of, of how, do we, how do we be a part of the blessed life or how do we be a part of the kingdom as Jesus begins this great sermon on the mount, teaching the disciples, instructing the disciples in, in a new way of thinking and living, counterculture, because it's a new kingdom. It's his kingdom. There's only one who rules and reigns And it's the Lord Jesus, the one who we just sang to, and the one we worship, the one who sacrificed for us. So the blessed life. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The main idea today is we can never experience the blessed life until we pursue righteousness. Until we pursue righteousness. Look at the word blessed in the original translation. It's translated uh, supreme blessedness. Uh, it's also translated happiness. Now, it's not a happiness that you and I uh, are accustomed to. Uh, for the happiness that you and I are accustomed to, it's, it's, it's short-lived, right? It's got to, I mean, you got to keep on getting whatever that is that's making you happy, feel good. And, but what Jesus is referring to in the original language here, it is something that is long-lasting. It's not this temporary satisfaction. So again, Jesus is instructing the disciples. He's teaching the disciples. And he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I wonder today, what do you hunger for? What do you hunger for? Now, in our house, we hunger for a lot of different things. Uh, typically, when we're talking about food, though, it, it, it's pizza. Now, I don't know about you, but it's, it's pizza. We ask our girls, hey, what, what you in the mood for today? And they're like, pizza. And it's like, that's always the answer. We know it's coming, pizza. And so we had pizza party on Friday nights. This past week, we had pizza party on Thursday night because we attended a very special gala for CareNet. Crisis Pregnancy Center, what a wonderful organization that we get to come alongside and support and uh, doing a wonderful work in our area. And so that was Friday night. It was a special, special night at the Civic Center. So pizza party was, was Thursday, but, but that's not the hunger that we're talking about today that, that Jesus is certainly referring to. He's not referring to pizza, right? He's not referring to pizza. Uh, but what do, you, what do you hunger for? Is it, is it comfort? I've met many people. They're just they're they're hungering for 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 comfort. They're they're, they're tired of the the pain and the suffering, and, and so they're hungering for comfort. Some are hungering for for fun. Some are hungering for for money. Uh, you're working yourself to death. Uh, some it's popularity. Some it's uh, social media. I mean, it, 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 you can't stop thinking. You know, did this person like my thing? You know, and uh, or did this person not? And uh, or comments or whatever. And, and, and or, or do you hunger for for God? I mean, you knew that was coming. You hunger for for God. Psalm chapter forty-two. Would you write this reference now? Psalm forty-two, verse one says this: "As a deer longs for flowing streams, as the deer pants for water." Right. So I long for you, God. I mean, do you hear the, the, the heart of the psalmist here? As a deer longs for, for the flowing streams, longs for that fresh source of life in that water. So I long for you, God. Verse 2, I thirst for God, the living God. When can I come and appear before God? You, you hear it in the, 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 the psalmist's heart cry. God, that I would long for you, have a greater longing for you. Knowing that you're the only one that will supply. You're the only one that will provide. May may I have a greater hunger and thirst for you, the living God. And so, uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Uh, what, What is our role in this? What is our role in this? Well, simply, it's the hunger and thirst for righteousness. That's the that's our role. That, that's, what, that, that, that's our responsibility, to hunger and thirst for, for righteousness. Psalm 63, verse 1, which write that reference down, says, God, you are my God. 
I eagerly seek you. I thirst for you. My body faints for you in a land that is dry, desolate, and without water. The psalmist say, hey, if you don't come through, God, I'm dead. And so may, may I have this greater desire. May, may, may I be that thirsty. Yesterday, there was a whole lot of thirsty people here. And uh, praise God, uh, after the, 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 the thing, praise God, we got a water fountain because uh, we forgot to, you know, bring bottles of water and stuff like that. Uh, that that's, you know, I'll take it on my back end. So um, we were working away, though. We we're blessed uh, by a church that, uh, man, we had probably one of the best work days yesterday here. Uh, God has gifted us this, uh, this, this property, although there is a mortgage. Don't, 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 you know, stop giving because you think it's, you know, there's, there's no bills to pay. Uh, they, they keep on calling and sending letters and stuff. It, it's weird. And so, uh, um, so, so man, it was incredible though. It was, we had a great day yesterday and I was blown away by how many, uh, children participated, man, we're throwing mulch and, uh, they were throwing mulch out there. You probably saw it as you drove in There's, we still got mulch by the way. If, uh, I mean, if you want to bring your truck, I guess, uh, free mulch, but, but we were, we were thirsty at one point. I was thirsty at one point. And it's like, man, I just, I need that. I need that sip to keep on going. That's what the psalmist is describing here. To be that desperate. Jesus already talked about that, to be poor in spirit. I, I mean, can you be honest before God? Are you that desperate for him? God, if you don't come through, I'm done. God, if you don't come through, I'm dead. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for, for righteousness. Our role, our responsibility is to be hungry, thirsty for, for righteousness. Well, what does the word righteousness mean? The word righteousness simply means being made right by the finished work of Jesus on the cross and, and through the empty tomb that you and I were doomed and damned to hell. But Jesus paid it all. His precious blood was shed on the cross over 2,000 years ago, a, a Roman cross for the whole world to see, and that Jesus' body went into that tomb, and on the third day, he rose victorious, therefore making us righteous, making us right, forgiving all of our sin debt, so that there's a way into heaven, and our responsibility simply hunger and thirst what Jesus has already accomplished on our behalf. He did what we could not do for ourselves. King Jesus. We're going to celebrate that, by the way, in a few weeks. A few weeks. We're going to have a special Good Friday worship gathering right here at noon. We're going to take communion. We're going to pause, reflect what Jesus has done for us. Then on Sunday, March 31st, we're going to celebrate that Jesus is alive, amen? And I pray that it wouldn't just be a you know, once a year celebration, by the way. I, I pray that every day that, that God gives us, that we have life, that we have breath, that we would celebrate the truth that Jesus is alive. And I pray a lost world would see that in the church, that Jesus is truly alive. Titus chapter three, verse four. Would you write that reference down? Titus chapter three, verse four. In, in case there's any confusion, but when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, when it appeared, when did it appear? It appeared over 2,000 years ago that Jesus really walked this earth. He saved us not by works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy, through the washing of regeneration and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He saved us, and not by anything good that we had to offer but by his great sacrifice for us, he saved us. Not by works of righteousness. The working of the Holy Spirit to draw us under this place of conviction that we are sinners before a sinless holy God. And the only way into heaven is by perfection. That's the standard. And the only way to receive that level of perfection, that standard, the only way to obtain it is through Jesus Christ alone. Verse 6, he poured out his spirit on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, so that having been justified, that is to be made right, having been justified by his grace, again, his unmerited, undeserved favor upon humanity, his grace, we may become heirs with the hope of eternal life. I hope you see in the text, in this passage, to the church, 
that it's all about Jesus. What a wonderful reminder. What a wonderful reminder. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I don't know what you came in today, those in the house, those online with us. I don't know what you, what you came in with today. I don't, I don't know what area is, is lacking in your life or, or what area you're even considering uh, this afternoon. Man, I got to do some work to, to improve this area or, or maybe that book that you just bought this past week that hopefully it's going to tell you what to do. But can I tell you today that if you want to improve your marriage, you want to improve your parenting, you want to improve your financial stewardship, you want to improve your serving, the calling, whatever it is, you want to be, be more joyful or, or whatever it is that you're lacking, the answer is this, pursue righteousness. Pursue righteousness. Bless, blessed are, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. For they will be filled. First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven. Would you write that reference down? First Timothy chapter six, verse eleven. An older Paul is teaching a younger Timothy. And he says, But you, man of God, I love the reminder of the older Paul to the younger Timothy of who Timothy is. The man of God. And I don't know if somebody needs to be reminded of who you are in Christ Jesus. You're not who you once were. You are that new creation. Paul reminds Timothy, but you, man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Paul reminds Timothy of who he is in Christ Jesus, and he encourages Timothy to flee from the things of the world. I don't know what has your attention. I don't know what has your focus. I don't know what has become a priority, perhaps even an idol in your life. But flee from it. Today, walk away from it. Surrender it over to the living God and pursue, and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Pursue the the things of the word. Pursue the things of the word. I've often wondered why don't more hunger and thirst for righteousness. Why even in my own lives there's, there's moments that I have to, to catch and I'm thankful for the working of the Holy Spirit to, to bring to my attention. Why don't more hunger and thirst for righteousness uh, and the first, that there's many, but, but just two today. That The first is what I would call legalistic Christianity. Now hold on before you start running, your mind starts racing. But why, don't more, why don't more hunger and thirst for, for righteousness, the righteousness of God? I believe there is a battle with this legalistic Christianity, legalism is dependence on moral law rather than on personal faith. And if we're not careful, it's creeping into the church. If we're not careful, uh, we start focusing on all the to-dos, all the rules, and, and all the works, and, and uh, it, rather than what has been paid for by Jesus Christ. Embracing the gift of, uh, of salvation, the new life in Christ the freedom that we have been set free. And as we grow in the Lord and in his word, you know, the, we're not so focused on the list, <laughs> not focused on the to-dos. We have a new motivation to serve him, to live for him, to grow in, in godliness. I grew up, there was a stint in our home growing up that uh, our parents got caught in this trap of a movement that was spreading across America at that time frame. And it was incredible as I think back on how many of our toys were thrown away and burnt <laughs> um, and, and how we better have a tie for coming into church. And it was all these rules and, and, and taking a step back uh, when we were planning the start of Discovery 15 years ago, I said, God, help me to never fall into to that. Um, help me to faithfully teach your scriptures 
and lead people in a, a real relationship with you, an intimate relationship with you. Help me to lead people to become fully devoted followers of you. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 says, for freedom Christ set us free. You've been set free. So stand firm then and don't submit again to a yoke of slavery. What you were saved from, what, what you were released from, you, you were a slave, but you've been set free. Stand firm in the freedom. If you fast forward to verse 13, he says, don't use the freedom that we have in Christ Jesus as an opportunity to sin, as an opportunity to, for the flesh, but, but use this freedom as the opportunity to serve others. And, and then it says, then, then, then Paul writes to the church in Galatia in verse 14, and he says, here's the greatest command. Love your neighbors. This, this is the greatest of them all. Love your neighbors. What if the church walked in freedom and the freedom of Christ Jesus and, and preached this message boldly with grace, built relationships where there could be some real conversations across the table. Craig Rochelle wrote, uh, once wrote, rules without relationship lead to rebellion. Rules without relationship lead to rebellion. And, and my concern, one of my greatest concerns in legalistic Christianity is the focus on rules without relationship. And what I'm seeing is, uh, parents, if, if we only focus on the rules and there is no relationship, you, you better uh, be prepared for rebellion. It's inevitable. And, and I, I hope and pray you won't wait to experience it personally, but that you would take heed the encouragement this morning. I'm not saying there's no standard. No, no, no. I'm not saying that you don't lead your home. I'm saying that you better build a relationship with your children. See, your children... They, they recall the last time you, you yelled at them. But uh, I wonder, do they recall the last time you showed them love and you sat and listened to them? And that's really the heartbeat of what we're talking about here, this relationship. Building the relationship that your children know that they can come to you. Certainly know that there is a standard which, in which we conduct ourselves in, in this home, but but is there a relationship followed where they know that you love them and that you love them enough even to discipline them so that you're setting them up for the future? The second, why don't more hunger and thirst for righteousness? And we could spend the whole message on, on the first Quick, quickly. The second is, is what I would say lukewarm Christianity. Why don't, why don't more hunger and thirst for, for righteousness? Because there's a lukewarmness about the church. There's a lukewarmness about the church. Revelation chapter 3 is a message to the church. Verse 16, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I am going to vomit. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. I wonder where you find yourself today. It's always amazing to me how cunning and deceiving the enemy is, and we should be aware of his, his working around us, but how he can lead us to that point of drift. And we find ourselves on one moment so incredibly hot for the Lord, passionate for him, the things of him. You know what I'm talking about. That moment where he's all that mattered. Even when things seemed to be falling apart, there was this burning passion to live for him. And somehow, if we're not careful and attentive, there's a drift that takes place. The enemy knows our most vulnerable points, and he knows, he knows just the right, wrong influences to place in our lives, whether it's people or, 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 or culture or uh, whatever it might be. We have to be so careful, so alert, so aware to stand firm in the faith. I mean, can you imagine, uh, let's talk about lukewarm. I don't know if you've ever had any lukewarm coffee. 
Uh, it's not the best. I want to recommend it. Discovery Coffee Shop's launching uh, March 18th, by the way, and we better not be serving no lukewarm coffee. Everybody's fired if that's the... No. It's got to be either hot or cold. That fresh hot drip, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, the taste of that fresh espresso coming through. Or, or that, that taste of that fresh cold brew, you know, nothing like it. Can't be in the middle. You can't be in the middle. Legalistic Christianity, lukewarm Christianity does not work. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, again, we've been made right by, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2, we have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Do, do, do you see what Paul's writing to the church in Rome? And he's saying, hey, we have this access. We have this access to come boldly before the throne of, of God, to stand in his grace and to boast in the hope of his glory. What a call for the church to help others see God as, as loving, as forgiving, but also as just, as approachable, and as involved. What a call for the, for the church to rise up and help others see God for who he is. Verse 18 of chapter 5 says, so then as, as through one trespass, there is condemnation for everyone. So also through one righteous act, there is justification leading to life for everyone. Just as one sin entered the world, we're all born into the sin nature. And we were dead because of our sins, dead in our trespasses, Ephesians 2. But praise be to God, because of his mercies, we've been made alive because of the one man who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 19 says, for just as through one man's disobedience, the many were sinners, the many were sinners. That's you and I. So also through the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Those who are in Christ Jesus, the real church, that's you and I. We've been made righteous because of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Verse 20, the law came along to multiply, to amplify the, the trespass. But where sin multiplied, grace multiplied even more. Grace multiplied even more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace will reign through righteousness. Grace, the grace of God will reign through, through righteousness resulting in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, the standard uh, to, to enter heaven is, is perfection, to be clothed in righteousness. And the only way to attain that standard is through Christ Jesus, his finished work. The church, we are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I, I want to encourage a few ways that we can create hunger for God. M maybe there's, there's some single folks in, in, in the house or online, and, and so perhaps th these are ways for, for you to create a greater hunger for, for God, for the living God. Uh, but, but parents, even grandparents, listen. As I said, I already got call, has called you. And so what, what are some ways that you can create hunger for God as a family? The first is this. Ha have, daily, have daily conversations as a family and involve God. If, if you're single today, hey, find some people, find some people and have, have these daily conversations. Find somebody, have a daily conversation and involve God. Uh, parent, parents, have daily conversations in your home. I know we're living in an era where uh, there's TVs in every room, even the bathrooms is crazy. And, um, <laughs> and I know there's, a, there's another device that like, we're glued to. And uh, it's like, when we don't want to you know, deal with the kids, it's like, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not the way, by the way. Uh, but yeah, just to clarify. And so uh, I, I know like, uh, and, and my daughter's like, Oh man, she's gonna be nine this week, and, um, and, and I mean, we had this conversation, uh, just a reminder, a loving reminder, a couple couple of weeks ago that now that's not happened until like fifteen. So come back and see us. And so, um, but but it, we can't live without it. It's like this technology is, is 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 killing us if we're not careful. And and so it's so easy to just miss God being the center of our homes. 
With all this technology around us, it's, it's so, it just seems so much easier to put on that show or binge watch that thing, you know, and, and, and rather than and involve God. And so I don't know what it looks like for you, what, what needs to happen in your home, but I just want to encourage you to have daily conversations with God. What, what, what has helped us, and you've heard this, if you're part of the church, you've, you've heard this, that every night we put our girls to bed and, and we, we, we pray, we pray together. We sing, Audra sings, and, 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 and we have this, this time and I treasure that time. And I got to confess, there are some nights, there are some nights that um, I'm tired. And I don't want to treasure that time. But I'm thankful for the reminder. I'm thankful for the reminder, the Spirit of God saying, you're not always going to have this time. And parents, you'd be foolish to believe that I'll make time later. I'll start at another date. Start now. Start now. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. Would you write that reference down? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words, verse 6, these words that I am giving you today are to be in your heart. They're to go deep. Verse 7, repeat them to your children. Do, do, do you hear this, parents? Do you hear this, grandparents? Do you hear this? Repeat them to your children. Talk about them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Repeat them, these words to your children. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your, your strength. Teach them to love God with everything that is in them. And repeat them to your children. Talk about it when you sit down at the dinner table. Talk about it when you're driving, riding. Uh, they're riding in the, in the car. I hope they're not driving. Uh, talk about it when, 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 when they lie down at, at night and, and when, when they get up in the morning, rise and shine and give God the glory. Glory. See God daily as a family. See God daily as a family. Second, make church a priority. Personally and, and, and in your home. Make church a priority. There's something about the gathering of the saints. When we get to look each other in the eye and have real conversations and catch up and pray for each other. I know we live in a fast-paced world. I'm thankful that we've had this coffee environment and, and the goal, of the, it started out, the goal was in between these two gatherings, knowing we were going to go to two gatherings, is to have a connection point. We have several events coming up. It's simple connection points that, that, that you're not just slipping in and slipping out. We launched discovery groups last week. And you know what that's about? It's about gathering with brothers and sisters beyond the Sunday morning, one hour worship gathering where you can actually sit down, hold each other accountable, have real conversations, really get to know the struggles of life and how you can support each other, encourage each other, pray for each other. Make church a priority in your home. I am thankful to God. I am thankful to God that my parents, my parents made going to church, being a part of the church, non-negotiable growing up. I am thankful to God that it was, there was no question. And some of you think, well, maybe you grew up in a different era. I, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I know some things are changing, and it's, it's time, parents, you take back the reins. Uh, that's a whole other message, but no, uh, you should lead your, your children in those days. I tried, by the way. I tried to, I tried to wake up sick days. You know, my, my parents said, no, go to the bathroom, put water on your face, brush your teeth, and you're going to be okay. And guess what? I was okay. And, uh, but I'm thankful that it was a priority in our home. Thankful. I'm thankful that my girls love coming to church and my girls love serving in the church. I'm thankful to God for that. I don't force them. We don't, I mean, of course, you know, we bring them, <laughs> but, but we don't force them to serve. They're asking us all the time, like all throughout the week, when's the next thing that we get to do? I mean, they were throwing mulch out. I mean, it's all this beautiful. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14, quickly says, therefore, fear the Lord and worship him in sincerity and truth. Get rid of the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and worship the Lord. I don't know if there's some gods uh, that are existing in your life and in your home that you need to get rid of right here, right now, before you go any further, remove them. Verse 15, but if it, but if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, listen to the text. Choose for yourselves today 
which you will worship. The gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. And this is what Joshua says that day. I mean, he puts a stake in the ground. And this is what he says. As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. If you want to create a greater hunger and thirst for, for righteousness in, in your home, then make church a priority. Would your kids say that the God is a priority in your home? We're asking them right now, by the way. I, I'm kidding. We're not. <laughs> Make the commitment today, though, that we are a Christ-centered home. Make that commitment. Single folks out there, make the commitment that I will live for Christ and Christ alone. The third, how do we create greater hunger and thirst for God? As a, personally, as a family, sh show how seeking and serving God is, is fun. Show how seeking and serving God is filling. There's fulfillment in it. As I sh shared, I grew up in a in Christian home. I'm not ashamed to say that. I am thankful to God for it. My earliest memory, I don't know, I don't know what your earliest memory is. Ask my wife, she's got crazy memory, by the way. I'm like, how do you remember all these names? Anyways, that's the but my earliest memory is like four years old. Dad and mom were volunteering. This is before he answered the call into ministry. Same way I'll say, well, yeah, you just grew up in a Christian home. No, no, no. It started well before that. Dad and mom were volunteering in a, in a college ministry. And I remember like four years of age going to these different events, going to these worship gatherings, going to these special things and being a part of it. And I thought, man, it's so much fun. Five years old, dad... Uh, a year later, dad was called to uh, plant a church. And, and so I, I remember going and setting up these chairs. And some of y'all been with us long enough to, to remember that. We don't want to remember that. Ah, you know, like that was a season in life. God did incredible things all those years of being portable before this. But there was something about it. I remember moving chairs, stacking chairs. There was something about it. And show, show your children how seeking and serving God is, is fun. Involve them. Involve them. We better not try and wait to involve the younger generation until they you know, reach a certain age. That's, that's ridiculous. Man, we want to involve them right here, right now. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. I want to close with this verse. It says this. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. They will be provided for you. Did you see it? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Well, what does Jesus teach? Same sermon, by the way. <laughs> Chapter 6. Same sermon on the mount. And what does he say? Seek first the kingdom. Not your kingdom, not a kingdom, but the kingdom. And, and, and not your righteousness, not somebody else's, but his righteousness. Seek first. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first his righteousness. And all these things will be provided. They will be added to you. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. How are we filled? By pursuing him. How do we experience the blessed life? By pursuing righteousness. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes all across this place, those that are online with us. wonder who or what are you living for today would you take a moment and be honest before God who or what are you living for right here right now where, where do you find yourself what dream are you chasing what's that area of need in your life you came in today they're in the house or online you came in with something heavy would you, would you surrender it over to the Lord maybe today you find yourself in a place of drift would you come
come back to God? Would you come home? I'm thankful for that story. Prodigal son leaves father's house, squanders it all. Comes to his senses finally and he comes home and expecting to be servant. His father meets him out in the yard with his arms open wide. What a beautiful picture of the grace of God. None of us, none of us deserve any, anything in this life except one place, and it's hell. But God in his grace has given us heaven. May we live for him, for his glory. As people are praying all across this place, others online, maybe there's one here that's never surrendered over to Jesus, never surrendered over to Jesus for salvation, for forgiveness of sins. If you were to die today, you don't know where you would spend eternity. Can I encourage you that today is the day of salvation? If the Spirit of God is moving in your life, that today is the day that you surrender it all. You surrender it all. You cry out to Him. Give it all to Him. Confess that Jesus is Lord. There's no other master. You're done ruling and reigning over your life. He's the master. Confess that Jesus is Lord, right where you're at. Confess that Jesus is Lord. And then believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Jesus walked this earth. He died on the cross. He was placed in a grave and he rose victorious for me, for you. Would you believe that today? If the Spirit of God's tugging it on your heart, would you believe that today? Would you trust him? With faith, receiving his grace, would you trust him? Would you thank him? In a moment, we're gonna sing a we're gonna sing this song, and as we as we sing, there's gonna be men and women in the house here, in different corners that would love to pray with you. There's a whole soul line. If you're online with us, I would love to pray with you. If there's something going on in your life, you're confused, you're feel weighed down, whatever it might be, would you, would you have the courage as, as we sing this song, would you have a cur the courage to, to step out of your seat and move? The person praying doesn't have to know all the details of your life. There's one who knows all the details, but there's something about a brother and sister coming alongside of you, praying with you. Maybe you're wondering what your next step is today. Salvation or, or, or baptism whatever it is. When we sing the song, would you have the courage to step out of your seat? Come to one of these corners. Ask the online host, would you help me with my next step? Lord Jesus, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your great sacrifice. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, to you be all the glory and all the honor. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.